Hello guys, welcome to lesson number 43 in our drawing series, drawing tutorials for beginners. And uh, we've really started to get towards the end of this homestead drawing now. I've, I've added, as you can see from the last lesson, I've, I've really worked in these darker areas and I've gone right into the, to the 6B pencil. I've still been layering the 2B and also the 6B and there's even some HB in there as well. But what I've started to do is bring out some of those darker details in some of those, um, those window areas that we can see. And I've just started to add a little bit of detail around these steps on some of these um, sort of handrails. I guess they're steps going down and some of these, this wooden structure around this outhouse. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be focusing on adding some details onto this uh, lighter side of the building, this right hand side here, which is actually, if we look at it, it's the lightest area and just continuing to work a little bit more in the details in the roof. And then we're going to start working in this grassy area in the front. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's get cracking on that. So the pencils we're going to be focusing on today, we're going to be using the 2B and the HB. Um, you might feel that the 2B could be a little bit dark, but if you actually look at this right hand side of the building here we have got some very very dark i guess there where the, the boards are lifting up and we've got some very strong shadows in there so it's very important that we do get those dark areas in um, so like i say the 2b but also the hb pencil once we've got a layer of graphite down we can actually start pulling out some very dark areas even with the hb pencil and that also means that what we've got then is we've got a very uh We've got a sharp point and it's a much harder pencil. <clears throat> okay, so we have a, a dark area over to the side here. So I guess I spent about another, I think I spent probably about another two hours on this uh, in between this session and the last session, just bringing the value up in some of those darker areas and also getting in some of those details in the roof Obviously, if you've uh, if you've come onto this this lesson and you haven't quite caught up and you've not quite got as much of the of the detail in as I have, then don't uh, don't worry too much. Pause the video, come back to it at a later time, and really just start to build your drawing up to a similar level that we've got here. Uh, but yeah, don't feel that there's a there's a huge rush. Now what we've got here from the, the rest of the drawing as we've been drawing is we have got some graphite in there already. Uh, so don't feel that you've got to add too much value into these areas. We've got a lot of we've got a lot of details that we can start to um, put into the drawing by actually taking value out that's already there. So we've got some of these wooden structures now, some of this, I can't quite make out what it is. I guess it's, uh, it looks like the remnants of what used to be in this area. Uh, maybe it was a, a storage area or something. There looks like there's some old pieces of metal that have maybe been stored around here. So we're just, detailing some of that. And it's these little details, these very dark details that are going to attract the eye in this very highlighted area, this. I'm guessing the sun's coming from this right hand side. And what we have there is this face of the building is in the direct sunlight. And we can tell that it's a very bright day because there's not an awful lot going on in the sky. However, we are going to add some clouds that aren't actually there. I thought it'd be a good opportunity for me to, to sort of teach you a few ideas and methods of, of how to draw some realistic clouds. So. Uh, in the next lesson, hopefully we'll we'll get through to adding some of the foreground grasses in this session. But in the next session, what I want to do is show you how to add some realistic clouds. It's 
It's been fantastic seeing some of your work over on the group. If this is your first time that you've come across my channel, obviously jumping in at lesson 43 possibly doesn't make too much sense to you and you're wondering why there's some man three quarters of the way through a drawing um, trying to teach you how to draw. This is, a, this is part of a series that I put together and started a few months ago. So we've been going sort of five or six months now, I think. And um, lessons one to six will give you some of the foundations and some of the techniques that we then use going through quite a few projects now. We've done the baby portrait project. We've done the realistic eye. We did our Siberian Husky. We did our blonde hair project on our young lady that we spent so much time rendering that hair. So like I say, if you're new to this channel, then I really would recommend going and checking out some of those earlier videos because they really do start to give you an understanding and a foundation and a platform to then understand some of the ideas and the techniques that we're talking about in these later projects. But by all means, if you're, a, if you're an accomplished artist and you just want to jump straight in, go and check out the start of this homestead drawing. And the idea really was to teach you some of the methods and ideas that I've picked up over the last few years. So I started drawing about three and a half years ago. Um, seriously, I mean, obviously, as a parent and and whatnot, I've I've done bits and bobs of drawing and little bits at school and the like, but nothing serious and nothing that I would call realistic. But uh, a few years ago, I decided that that was something that I wanted to have a go at. It was something I was always interested in. So I went on a, a bit of a journey, which is possibly very similar to what some of you guys and girls have than yourself, you trawl the internet and pick up various techniques and ideas and before you know where you are, you've got a mishmash of ideas in your head and certainly what I felt like, no real understanding or structure of what exactly to do. And I'm a, I'm a big believer in getting fundamentals in place in whatever we're doing. So, you know, if we were learning to drive a car or learning to cook, uh, I'm sure that there are certain things that we need as a foundation. So I decided to make this series of, of videos and lessons and giving you sort of a coherent understanding of the way that I've picked things up and the things that have worked for me. Because don't get me wrong, I've, I've made plenty of mistakes and I've got lots of things wrong. And I just wanted to hopefully give you a understanding of the processes that I've gone through and hopefully speed it up but also it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg I mean I've spent plenty of money on art classes and products and things like that and not everybody's can obviously afford to do things like that so if I can give you the things that have worked for me. Now, I'm not saying that the techniques that I'm teaching you are the only way of drawing. But I've tried everything that you guys are probably trying yourselves and stumbled upon. You know, I've tried blending stumps and I've tried using graphite powder and charcoal. And I've done some extensive work with ink, Copic markers and things like that. And when I come back to what's really taken my drawing forwards, it's these methods that I'm teaching you now. Now, if you want to go out and try your hand at colour pencil work, a lot of the ideas that we talk about in these videos will still apply. The same as if you're going to be doing pastel work, I guess, or anything like that. We don't just talk about how we lay the graphite down. I'm talking about how light works, how values work, how proportions work, perspectives and things like that. And those things are always going to carry through into whatever medium it is that you decide upon using. 
So I'm using my HB pencil now in this area here and we've got some, again, it, it looks like old fencing. Um, I'm guessing these are probably metal structures again that uh, that were once used, I don't know, maybe to tie cattle to or some sort of storage area. And they are quite harsh and quite stark on the very light background. Now I'm just freehanding these in. We did start off drawing this out with the grid method. I teach you a few different ways of plotting your drawing out, but making sure that the drawing is accurate is one of the most important aspects when we're trying to draw for realism. But as we're progressing on and becoming a little bit more confident, we're going to do a little bit more freehanding. So all of these details in here, we're just looking for areas that line up with one another, understanding the angles and looking for things that are going to give us a clue as to how best to put these details in. And the more that you do that, the more you practice starting with the grids or starting with the portional dividers, uh, whatever it is that you're using to plan. I don't even, you know, I don't even see any any issue in people starting off and, and um, tracing. I see a lot of art groups are saying, oh, you should never trace, it's cheating, blah, blah, blah. Of course it's not cheating. If you're training your eye to see things and you're coming out with a realistic drawing at the end of it, then how can it be cheating? You know, and what I also say is it's not the outlines that are the important bit. It's learning how the light works and the shadow works and what's going to make a good drawing. What kind of photograph are we going to use? Because I see people taking reference images from Google Images and the image itself was never very good. So, you know, when they turn out a drawing that is substandard and something that they're not hugely proud of, you then have to say, well, the image you were working from was also poor quality, so don't beat yourself up too much on it, but just learn how to pick and choose the correct type of images that are going to give you the best chance of producing something that you're proud of. So however you can get your drawing down on the page, go for it. You know, I'm certainly not going to judge you, and hopefully the group that we're starting to create isn't, isn't going to judge you either. get something down on the paper, start learning about values and how to lay down the graphite in the way that I'm teaching you. You'll notice that I'm not using a blending stump. I don't use tissue paper or Q-tips. I'm laying the graphite down just with the pencils. I'm layering them working from the harder pencils, which are the H pencils, so 4H, 2H, into an HB, which is a mid-level mid, mid -level pencil. And then layering those so that we condition the paper to be able to then take the softer pencils, the B pencils. By not damaging the tooth of the paper with our blending stumps and blending tools, gives us the opportunity to take away value. And in a piece like this, where we've got such stark contrast between the light and the dark areas, protecting that tooth of the paper is vital. Otherwise, what we end up with is we end up with a, a drawing that have got a lot of mid-tones and mid-values in there, but not a huge amount of those very light areas and when we start to work into the darker zones, we end up getting something called graphite shine. Now, we're never going to completely avoid graphite shine. It's just the medium that we're working in. The particles that come off of the pencil, the graphite particles, are very, very flat. And therefore, they become quite reflective. If you compare that to a charcoal, particles that come off of the charcoal are 
not as flat, not as uniform. And therefore we have a less reflective surface and that's why we get very little to no shine on the areas that we've worked in. But by layering the pencil down in the fashion that I'm teaching you, it minimizes that. So again, just looking at some of these subtle details in here, we're not getting too bogged down with it and, you know, don't, uh, don't spend hours trying to get every single detail in there. Well, if that's something that you want to do, then absolutely go for it. You know, I'm not here to dictate to you what you should and you shouldn't do. If you want to spend three hours on this gate, on this right hand side, and get every single thing in there perfect, then go for it. If you're drawing a picture of something, let's say this was somebody's old barn that they'd had for the last 200 years and it was in their family and it had been passed down and you were drawing this for somebody that knew every inch of it, then perhaps getting the details in there spot on would be something that you would need to do. But for the purposes of what we're learning here, I don't feel that that's absolutely necessary. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of the value out. Now, this needed eraser and the technique that I'm teaching you where we're layering is absolutely vital for us to be adding and taking away value. And that's what gives us a realistic look. So don't feel the first time that you take value out, that's going to be it. We're gonna add a little bit more in certain areas, we're gonna take some away. So now I've got these details and I'm just gonna add in some of those horizontal lines on the face of this building that are just suggesting that we've got planks of wood which are making up the structure of this building. And they're, they're quite subtle, so we don't wanna go in too dark there. I'm using my HB pencil. Adding a few more of those details. And then again, once, a, once I've got some of that in, I'm gonna just make a point to my kneaded eraser. And I'm just going to take out some of the, the value on some of those boards because they are, like we say, that is the brightest area of our drawing. And for those of you that have been with me for quite a while on the group and you've watched most of my tutorials, you will hear me banging on about contrast. Um, I hear some of you have been, you know, discussing over on the group about other YouTube channels and things like that that you like uh, and other YouTube artists and whatnot. Uh, and I've, I've heard the name Kirsty Partridge pop up a few times. Uh, and she's definitely a, 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 an artist I admire. She, uh, she does some wonderful stuff with the coloured pencils particularly. But if you watch any of her videos, she also bangs on about contrast. Now I need to make sure that this area here is the lightest area and the darkest areas in those windows remain the darkest. And if I can, the more I can bring the contrast up in those two areas, the more realistic my drawing is going to appear. And that's what we're looking for. So that needed eraser is, is, is vital. But again, if I'd used my, if I'd used a tortillion or a paper stump, or even to some extent a piece of tissue paper, if I'd used those to blend initially in these areas, I would really be struggling now to take the value out. Okay, so we've, we've now got some of these rafters, I guess they are, that are protruding out of the edge and they're quite an important aspect of this because <clears throat> whenever we've got very very dark shadows within a, a light area like this 
it really draws the viewer's eye in. And it's these subtle details that are, for me, they make up the difference between it being a good drawing and, a, and an excellent drawing, something that we're, you know, we're really proud of that, that does capture all of the elements in this realistic aspect. So just, again, not being too, and I'm using my 2B pencil in here again, because I want that con contrast, I want that that dark shadowed area, but I'm not being too precious over the exact details. I'm not counting how many there are there. And again, if that's something that you feel you needed to do, then absolutely go for that. But I'm, I'm gonna use a combination of my 2B and my HB in these areas because I, I want some of these areas to be less contrasty. In my drawing, I want a range of values. So I don't want everything to be too dark. I don't want everything to be too light. I need a little bit more value in now on the edge of this roof here. So if you've not joined the uh, the group so far, if, you, if you're with us this far through this video and you've not joined our group or you've not thought about it, I really would advise you to go and do that. Go and find our Facebook group. It's called Tutorial Tuesdays Beginners to Pro and request to join that and you'll find all of the videos, all of the reference images that we've used. Uh, you'll also find a group of people that between us, we've got some fantastic artists, we've got a lot of beginners, we've got some intermediate artists in there as well. But most of all, we're quite a supportive group. I've been noticing recently on a lot of these art pages that we've, we've got a lot of arguing and complaining and people posting images that are political or whatnot and it just causes havoc. There's a lot of spam on there. And I'm quite happy to say that our group is starting to turn into one that's quite mature and constructive. You know, people are at different levels of their learning. And like we say, I'm not coming on here dictating to you that this is exactly how you must do things. What I'm doing is I'm showing you the ways that I've learned and the methodology that worked for me and, you know, I've, uh, I've started to earn a little bit of money out of my artwork. You know, I do commissions for people and things like that. So if I can speed that process up for you and get you to a stage where you're earning some money or you're starting to make some commissions for people or, you know, even if it's just about bettering yourself and being proud of what you've, you've produced, then... That's what it's all about for me. And I think the group's kind of showing that in its own way. It's, like I say, it's very supportive. So come and join us. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Click the notifications icon at the, at the side of the subscription button and you'll be notified whenever I do drop a new video. And at the moment, we're doing Tuesdays. And we're also doing the weekends, we're doing Saturdays as well. It would be nice to get to the stage where I can release a little bit more content, but obviously life gets in the way sometimes of things. And then once you're in the group, make yourself known. Let us know who you are, where you're from how long you've been drawing, post up some of your images. I've got no problem with people posting their current work. It's the spammy, um, not non-art related posts that we're going to try and keep down to a, a minimum, obviously. I might miss the odd one, but you guys have been pretty good at reporting the silly images and the silly spammy posts that we can sort of clean up.
And like I said, we could spend an awful lot of time in this roof area here. There's a lot of detail. So I'm not going to bore you with just sitting watching me doing these details for, for hours. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure you, you, you're understanding the technique that I'm using. I'm using the HB and the 2B pencil. And I'm just picking out some of these horizontal gaps in the roof and some of the vertical areas as well. Making sure that we've got these subtle darker patches that are, I guess, representing holes and tiles that are missing and things like that. Uh, and at the same time, I'm trying to preserve the lighter areas. So you can use your Mono Zero eraser for this, which is a slightly different eraser to the needed eraser. You can get a much thinner tip on there. Uh, it's a much harder eraser, but again, just taking out some of these areas that are really catching the light. We can use those in these sections as well. And then I'm constantly brushing. So using this soft brush and just moving some of the graphite around. Now I can see that I need to add a little bit more value in, sorry, take some of the value out of these boards here that are again in the direct sunlight and this is a process that's ongoing because the graphite moves around particularly with the brushing you feel that you've got these up to the correct value but as you move on through the rest of the drawing we do get a slight coverage again so this is what I'm talking about about maintaining your light areas and also darkening up the darker areas. So we've got some very dark patches in here, some holes. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is, I'm just going to start giving you an idea of how we're going to achieve this grassy look at the front now. We've got an awful lot of value in here already uh, that you could start to take out with the needed eraser, but we're gonna work with that. And um, in the same way as we worked the blonde hair, what we're going to do is we're going to add in some of the value into some of the darker areas using this tapered stroke. I'm just going to start layering. Now again, not being too picky about each individual stroke of grass because this is just going to be our initial layer. This is going to be our first layer. So we're just getting the the rough lie of the land really and just seeing <clears throat> where we are and what I'm really trying to do here is I'm trying to get the graphite into the darkest areas and we're going to use our erasers to bring out the lighter strands of grass but like I say, we're just getting an initial layer. So this 2B pencil is perfect because I don't need to press on too hard to get some graphite on there. And then I can move the graphite around with the brush. And as we're coming into these areas now, you'll notice that the graphite isn't as prominent. It's not, it's not showing as much. And that's because we've already got a lot of graphite in there from the brushing. So we've got some, this area here, we've got some darker zones. And this is the process that you would use if you're drawing hair as well. Use your 2B pencil and go into the shadowed areas first. Start building up your shadows in the darkest areas. I guess it's the same as the way we start all of our drawings, really. Um, but with the grass and with the hair, you don't need to be as precise with your tapered strokes and, and by that I mean you don't need to be laying them down perfectly next to each other because we do want a sort of random look to this because obviously anything in nature is isn't going to be uniform and, and set in straight lines and right angles and we want to get that across in our drawing 
So we've got some shadowed areas in these. This front area, this has got some shorter grass in there. So let's give that a little brush, just so that we now, I can show you how much graphite is actually in there and how we're going to start building up some more realistic grass. So taking our Mono Zero eraser now, and um, what I like to do is just clean the edge. So I just take the edge off, and sometimes we get a bit of a buildup of graphite. And working in these lighter areas now, again, using the tapered strokes, it's the same stroke that we've, we've been using. I'm pulling towards myself, and we can be a little bit braver with this and you can do some different types of strokes and trying to put flicks towards the end of them and you can see now that we're starting to build up something that has a slightly more realistic look to it we're not drawing every strand in we're just getting the general direction of some of these and making sure that we're coming up into the building itself. We don't want this to be all uniform. We want some longer strands protruding up over, as you can see in some of this grass in front of here. And again, this is the contrast again that we've been talking about that I'm going to try so hard to achieve with this. I, I can see that we've got some very light areas, even to the extent where some of the tips of grass have got light and dark areas within them. So it would be nice if we can capture even just a hint of that in some of the places. Make sure you keep cleaning the end of your eraser and just brushing away some of the graphite and rubber that we're producing on the page. If you wipe that away with your hand, I've done it many times, what happens is we can, uh, we can smudge it into the paper itself. just paying attention to the length of the grasses. So we don't want it all uniform. This is not the way that wild grass is going to grow. Um, unless this was a freshly mown lawn, you're gonna have many different lengths. Probably more so here than if we were drawing a hair on a person. We're gonna have a, a much bigger variety of length than let's say on somebody's head of hair. So again, it's just these small opportunities, which you may feel is slightly pedantic and is going to take too long. And this is the process that we go through. Somebody was saying on the group the other day that one of the things that they've learned the most from these tutorials is patience. These things don't happen quickly and we're not trying to rush them. none more so than this grassy area here in front of us. We're building up layers. Using the tapered stroke, I'm using this exactly the same as I would do my pencil. And I can see quite a build up now of graphite, so I'm going to remove some of that. And it's finding these opportunities in your drawing, as many opportunities as you can to bring out a highlight, bring out a darker area, remove a strand of hair or grass that's going to then make your drawing look more natural. 
by doing this and having the patience, you know, if this takes us an hour, it's an hour well spent if the end result is one that just convinces the viewer that what they're looking at is a photograph or realistic drawing. I hear people talking about hyper-realism and whatnot. We're not going for hyper-realism. Uh, and don't compare yourself to those. You know, I it was a trap that I fell into in, in the early days that I'm looking at these people that have drawn these, you know, hyper-realistic artworks and you see a lot of people doing them and they're absolutely massive. You know, their their pieces of work are, you know, the size of a wall in some cases. And they've taken them, you know, hundreds of hours. But then when it's being viewed as an image on Instagram, we don't understand the scale. We don't get a representation of how big it is. So we think that somebody's drawn this on A4. And then we start comparing our A4 drawing where we haven't got the, the detail and the resolution in there because of the size. And uh, it was certainly something I did. And I was comparing myself to it going, oh, wow, you know, this is so much better than my artwork. And how am I ever going to achieve that? type of look but actually it wasn't something that I should have been comparing so what we're looking for is we're looking for realism I like people to look at my work and as they get closer to it go oh it is a drawing you know initially people thought it was a photograph from a distance I've got a couple of pictures of my daughters on my wall that I drew and one of my dog as well. And from a distance, people think that it's just a black and white photograph. And then they get close to it and they're like, is this a drawing? Did you draw this? And you're like, yeah. So I like that about it. You know, I don't want something that looks printed. You know, if I wanted something that looks printed, I would get some photographs put up and print them off for free. But I want to see that the pencil strokes have been made here and the, the eraser has been used in that area from close up positions, of course. But from a distance, we want to really trick the viewer into believing that what they're looking at is, is real. And that's our job as an artist. Let the viewer's mind do the work. We're just gently pushing them in a direction. So that's coming on nicely now. I'm going to start to add again a little bit more value. So I'm going to add another layer. And I'm just going to pick out some of those darker spots within the lighter areas. And we've spoken about this quite a lot to a greater extent in, in these areas. But just because something's light doesn't mean that it's all light. And just because something's dark, again, doesn't mean that it's all going to be dark. We don't ever want anything to be the same value. So within our value, we want darker areas and lighter areas. Because that's how it happens in real life. If you were looking at a skull and the socket in the eye it's not just all a flat black color in there or or value shade whatever you want to call black we have a darker area a darker region the light's bouncing off in different ways but we understand that it's a hole and we interpret it as that but actually within that hole there might be some slightly lighter areas lighter values the same as in this light grass. In this light grass here, we've got some values in these areas that are not a million miles away from some of the values on our darker portions of the roof. But because they're surrounded by light grass, our brain interprets it as light grass and we don't feel as though it's as dark as some of the areas in the darker zones. But it really is. That's just a trick of the mind. And when you get your head around that. Oh, 
And then we're going to brush again a little bit more value into some of those areas. And then guess what we're going to do? We're going to start to take some more of it out again with our Mono Zero Razor. And it gives us another layer upon which we've already worked on. So it's making it look as though there are thousands and thousands of strokes of grass rather than just one basic layer. And I think for me, that's the one thing that I notice the most with people when they're drawing hair. You know, they, they present a drawing that they feel is finished. And for me, when I look at the hair, They've really only done the first initial, the first initial layers of hair. And you can see the white paper sticking through. And if they only went about the, the rest of the hair in exactly the same way that they'd already done the first couple of layers, it'd look fantastic. So they're on the right track, but they've just not been patient enough. They've wanted to get to the finishing line too soon. And they end up with something that looks amateurish so I need a little bit more value in this area here because I've not got anything to work with I'm, I'm trying to take out some value but there's just nothing there so I'm just going to work some of these slightly shadowed areas And that should give me a little bit of something to play with once I've brushed it in. I definitely need some more value in. Yeah, as my eyes are adjusting to the actual values that are in this grassy area, and it does take a while to do that. I've been looking at a dark area for so long, so many hours now in the actual structure of the building that when I start looking into the lighter areas I find it difficult initially to pick out the correct values and the correct tones but now I've been on this for 10 minutes or so I can start to see where I need much more value and sometimes just taking a break from your drawing is uh, is all that's required you come back and you notice things that you hadn't noticed. So just brushing that in a little bit now, that should just give me a little bit more. I can probably pull some graphite down from the, the building itself. So I think that um, we're going to call it a day there on this one. And for the next lesson, I want you to have had a go at creating this grass and getting as far across the bottom as we can uh, and then what we're going to be doing next lesson is we're going to be doing some clouds in the background I'll put a reference image that I'm going to I'll just find a random reference image off on the on the internet um, I'll search Pixabay but I'll put the reference image that I'm just going to be very loosely looking at just so that we've got some basic structures and I'll talk you through the process of of drawing some realistic clouds um, and then hopefully the lesson after that we'll just do a little bit of fine tuning balance a few values and then that should about see us coming towards the end of of this project which has been an absolute pleasure once again to draw along with you and see some of your work and seeing how some of you are improving and we've seen a lot of new members or old members but new to posting some of their work trying some of the early lessons so that's brilliant so thank you so much once again for supporting the channel and supporting the the uh, the facebook group which is growing into quite a a fun place crack on with your homestead uh, i'm really happy with how we're we're coming along with that now and um, i'll see you guys over in the group but i'll see you in the next video thanks so much for watching Hit subscribe, smack the notifications button, 
follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter.